Okay, welcome to math class, everybody. Um, we're ready to begin, I believe. Now, if you don't have your paper anymore, that's okay. Um, we, we're just gonna start out here and talk about what happened on these six um, graphic organizers, okay? Mathematicians usually call these input-output charts, okay? They can be written side to side like this or up and down. And that is common for, for us to put information into grids like this to keep track of things. Okay, and we're going to use a grid today as well for our math class. Um, could I get Josh to shut our door, please? Hi, sweetie. All right, so if you notice, there was some of them that had the same exact answers, okay? So um, I would like to know what the answers are for this one right here. So does anybody have this on their desk and can help me out with that? Okay. Those of us at home, please wait to send any chats with questions in them. Please wait until the end of the class period. Okay. Yes. So the first answer right here you say is 32. Okay, and what's the next one? J Jacob? And the next one? Thor? And the next one? McKenna? 80. What about here? Rebecca? Okay. Miley, do you know this one? 11. What about this one? Micah? And how about this one, Kaden? Okay, so I'm going to put those in there. So you're saying to me that this is 10, 11, 12, and 13. Miss Franzen, if you're talking, you're talking, you're muted to the rest of us. So I'm not sure what you're doing. I did so forget to mute, didn't I? Okay, unmute. Here we go. Here we go again. <laughs> so basically what we were talking about is what's going on with these with these charts here. Okay. And in my class, they were giving me some answers. Okay. All right. So maybe Ms. Mueller has somebody who can tell me the four answers that go in this chart. Um, number two is 10, 11, 12, and 13. All right, thank you so much. How about Miss Lewis? Do you have anybody who has the answers to this last chart? Okay, hold on. You guys come up and talk in the mic, bud. Sorry, we can't hear you back there. Who do we get to talk to? We're talking to Logan. All right. Just stop right here. Oh, right. 30, 48, 180. So 32, 48, and what else? 64 and 80. Oh, awesome. Okay, thank you guys so much. Now I'm going to ask a few questions about what we're noticing in these six um, charts. Okay. Uh, mathematicians usually call these types of charts input-output tables. Um, it is very common for us to use uh, charts and tables and graphs and graphic organizers like this. Okay, so what can we say about the value of this expression, the value of this expression, and the value of this expression? What can we say about those three expressions? Right. So she said, she said, if you multiply four times four, 
then you get 16, which is the same as this. It turns into 16x basically is the same thing, but written a little differently. And then again, the same thing happened here. It doesn't matter which order we multiply in, we're always going to get the same product. So can we say this? Can we say that four times parentheses open x times four is equal to parentheses open four times x times four is equal to 16x? We can say those are all three equal expressions. They're all equal to one another. Which one is in the simplest form? Which one has the fewest terms? Four. The 16x is the one that's in the simplest form. Okay, and the reason why this happens is because when you're in real life and asking questions about things, um, sometimes the data doesn't come in really neatly in the simplest form, okay? So when we're building expressions, sometimes we have a messy expression, and um, if we just simplify it down to its simple, simplest form, we're going to get the, the best and fastest way to get to our answers, okay? Because 16 times x is faster than having to do the other multiplying and then multiply the third number, okay? And so we can say the same thing about the other three input-output tables, can't we? All three of those expressions are equivalent. Which one is in its simplest form? Sophie. I agree. She says x plus 8 is in the simplest form. Okay, you see how this one only has two terms? This one has how many terms? Three. This one also has how many terms? Three. Okay, and so from here to here, what moved? What moved? The numbers did, didn't they? They, they? they turned in different orders. So this would be an example of the commutative property, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and move on. I know a lot of you have already turned in your math for today, so you might not even have this in front of you. But I just wanted to go back and look at it and talk about it a little bit so that we thought a little bit more deeply about how it is these expressions can be um, related to one another. Okay. Whoa. That's not where I wanted to go next. This is where I want to be next, okay? So I want the teachers in the classrooms to go ahead and pass out these um, papers. Uh, it doesn't look just like this, but it's got this in the bottom corner. And the kids don't need much on their desks except for a pencil. So just a pencil is needed, okay? Just to start with, all we need is a pencil. So if you're still working on something for another class, that must be put away. Beautiful. Okay, so you can see when you get this paper, you're going to see that it's on this paper, but there's a lot of other stuff we have to work on too. Okay. But we're going to start here, I think, just because I want you to know how to get it going. Okay. So in the directions for this part of our assignment, it says you roll two number cubes. The first number cube determines the value of x, and the second number cube determines the value of x, or of y. I lied. Okay. So in the expression, 60 over x minus y. Or so this is um this is this is what they're trying to say. Just to be clear. All right, so the first number cube determines the value of x. All right, so along the top line, whatever, whatever number is on the, these top dice is going to be the x value. So 60 over, if I'm in this box right here, 60 over 1 minus, what is my y value? Well, the second cube is going to be our y value. 
Okay, and is our second cube also one? Yes. So we're going to do 60 divided by one. And what does that equal? 60, very good. 60 divided by one is 60. And then when I subtract one, what do I get? Beautiful. Okay, so what am I going to put in this box? Go ahead and put the 59 in that box, please. Okay. What if I roll and I get an answer here? Okay, I get an X in a, uh, on my first roll and a uh, 2 on my second roll. I have 2s. So 60, we keep using the same expression over and over again. What is 60 divided by 2? 30 minus 2? 28. Okay, so what are we going to put in that box? 28. Okay. So make sure you pick up your pencil and put a 28 in that box. Okay. What if I roll right here? I roll the first cube and I get a 3. I roll the second cube and I get a 5. Do I still use the same expression? I sure do. Okay. And I use the, the x value of 3 under the 60, don't I? And the y value of 5. Okay. What is 60 divided by 3? 30. You guys agree? 60 divided by 3 is 20. Oops, and I put an equal sign. I meant to put a subtraction sign. So what's our result here? 15. So what we're doing is we're just substituting in the numbers based on where the cubes are, right? So if I have, if I have to fill in my chart, here, my x value is 2, my y value is 1. Here, my x value is 3, my y value is 1. Here, my x value will be 4, my y value will be 1. Okay, so hopefully we all kind of understand how to do that. All right, so I was going to try to roll the dice again today and see if it works better for me. Are you guys ready? Ready. Please work. Please work. Okay, I want to use two dice. Oh, I got three. So maybe I need to click this one. All right. We have a we have the we're gonna call the green one our first dice because it's furthest to the to the left. And the three. So let's see. Have we already filled that one in? No. Um, at the back up, no. Am I back on full screen? So one and three. So since my first number cube was a one, my x value is going to be one. My y value is going to be three. Do you see how that's going to work? So I go 60 over, what was my x value? One, one minus three. three. 60 divided by one? 60. 60 divided by 1, I keep 60. Minus 3. 57. See, because the I forgot to write this. 60 over x, our x value is 1, minus y. Our y value, the second value is right here, is a 3. Okay? So I have 57. Okay? Oops, I did on the wrong. Okay. Right. Okay, so those are that's how I'm going to ask you to do those questions. I need to open up a different screen so I can show you what I expect you to do on your homework paper. Okay, because I'm going to be a bit nitpicky today about how you show your work. I do apologize in advance for being nitpicky. However, uh, it's going to be good for you to get used to doing your mathematics in algebra the way I'm asking you to do it today. Okay, so I hope most of you noticed when I did those questions just now, I started at the top with the expression, and then I plugged the numbers in, that expression right below it, 
And then I, I solved the expression since that was just a two-step expression. It didn't take very much to solve, so I didn't have to do anything but use another step. Okay, I'm sorry, Mrs. Allen, I keep going to this. So I just need a new one. Okay, so we're all looking at our math paper right now, correct? Yes, save your right question. Let's look at number one. Okay, let's be, make sure your pencils are put down because I don't want you uh, looking at your paper and writing at the same time. I want you watching and listening to the smart board, okay, and to my voice. Okay, so here's what I'd like you to do when you do your questions. So, of course, you're going to number your papers like usual, right? So, this will be question number one. First step is going to be copy the expression, the way it's written on your paper. Okay, whether you want to or not, I'm asking you to copy the expression. That will be worth one point. If you then look at the directions, it says evaluate the expression when x equals 4. So for where the two x's are, below that, I know I can put a 4 in, those, in place of those. Okay, and then it says and our y values will be 2. Okay. So the second step is to plug the numbers in. So we're going to copy, plug in the numbers, and then the next step will be showing the solve. Okay. What is 4 divided by 2, everybody? What is 2 divided by 4? One half. Okay. If we wanted to change it to decimals, we could. I don't care what you do, okay? But then the result is going to go below. Okay. And I really do like it when we box in our answers. So identify your answer by circling it or putting a box around it. Okay, identify your answers. <gasps> Hey, so any questions on how we need to show our work? All right, so now would be a great time to get a piece of paper out and fold it and number it, okay? So I'm going to pause our mute myself for just a moment, and you're going to go ahead and get a piece of paper out for your second paper for your math assignment now. Hey, Ms. Frampton. Yes. My kids have a couple questions about that thing you that problem you just showed. They said you were dividing, but it was an addition problem. What did they miss? Okay. Um, I'll go back to that in just a minute. Have them get their papers out, and then I'll explain that again. Okay. Thanks. Hold your paper like always. Extra wet. Second door down under the printer. Is that you? Oh, yeah. It was me. I thought it looked like you. And then I tried opening up the door and it didn't open. Yeah, Lena did the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. I gave her my name. My dad was right behind me. Oh, that was your dad, huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to go ahead and unmute now. Can you guys hear me? You probably heard me all along because I don't think I actually got unmuted. I am so sorry. Okay, so I'm going to revisit number one. Number one. It says in the um, directions for numbers one through eight, evaluate the expression when 
x equals 4, y equals 2, and z equals 5. Okay? And in our expressions here, we had an x value here and a y x value here, right? So instead of having an x there, I put a 4 there and a 4 there, right? Okay. So then it had a y value here and a y value here. So that's why I decided to put a 2 here and a 2 here, because up in the directions, it actually tells us what those variables are equal to. Okay? And then I asked, well, what is? What is the fraction 4 halves? Well, it's just a division problem. Every fraction is simply a division problem. Okay? 4 divided by 2 equals 2. Doesn't it? So that's my result for that first fraction. All right? I still have my plus sign right there, don't I? It is it is a plus sign here. I agree with you. Okay? And then over here, 2 divided by 4 is 1 half. If you have 2 divided by 4, what it really means is 1 half. Okay? You could have used the decimal version of that, which would turn out to be 0.5, wouldn't it? 2 divided by 4 would be 0.5, right? So I can answer either 2 and a half or 2.5. I prefer to just leave it as fractions when they start out as fractions. But if you want to switch over to the division way, you can, okay? So when I was done then, I took this plus sign and I said, what is 2 plus 1 half? Well, if you have 2 plus 1 half, it equals, it equals 2 and a half. So that's where my adding happened. Okay. Mrs. Ramsden. Yeah. Um, I had a couple who were thinking that they could um, simplify before they add, but do you want to explain to them why they can't do that? Like simplify the fours and the twos that cross. Yeah. Yeah. And I will you. do that. Okay. So the big difference is, is you can only simplify before you multiply. And is this a multiplication problem? No, it's an adding problem. You can only simplify before you multiply two fractions. You can never simplify before you add fractions, please. Okay, that will cause you problems. So, on your first square, I want you to copy what I have up here. Okay, but I'm going to take all the other extra stuff off that I just did to explain why. It looked wonky to um, Mrs. Allen's class. Okay, so I want you to, in your first rectangle for number one, to show your work the way I showed my work on the smart board. Please copy that down the way I did that one. Okay, notice I go down to a new line instead of a cross. Do I have any equal signs there? Are there any equal signs on the smart board? No. They're not going to be any equal signs because this guy here is an expression. Expressions do not have equal signs. Okay? What does what doesn't have an equal sign? Right. What does have one is a equation. E Q U A T I O N. Okay, so I should never see any equal signs if it's only an expression. If it start out, started out as an expression, it's going to remain expression, and you leave out the equal sign. Okay. Now, I'm hoping that you've numbered your paper because some of these are kind of really a little bit more difficult than we're used to thinking about. And they threw in some brackets. So, and they threw in some exponents as well. So we're going to look at number three next. No, I lied. Number five looks like a better one to look at first. 
Okay, so let's get ready to write in number five. Does anybody need more time to copy number one down? You need more time? No, but number two is I know. You got to think through it. Yep. So number five is the one we're working on next. So skip to the spot on your paper that is number five. What's the first step when you have to do these kinds of problems? Yes. Copy. Copy. So on your paper, in the spot for number five, we copy the question right off our worksheet. Make sure you copy it correctly. Okay. All right. So in uh, mathematics, we have lots of different kinds of grouping symbols. We have brackets. We have parentheses. Um, I don't know what these doohickeys are called. I used to know there's a name for them. Okay. We have all kinds of different symbols to show that something is grouped together. Okay. And the rule is for grouping symbols is you work from the inside to the out. And what that means is we look for the grouping symbol that is in the very, the very smallest grouping symbol inside the expression. So this one right here is our smallest grouping symbol, and that's where we're going to start. Okay, so we're going to go ahead on our next slide, and we're going to go ahead and plug in our numbers, because that's the second thing we're supposed to do. So instead of a Z, what should I put? Five. Five minus, what should I put for the X? Four. Four plus, what is that last one? Well, it's already a four. I can't even change it, can I? Okay, so on my next line down, I'm going to solve that first parenthesis. One, Five minus four is? One square plus four squared. Okay, so do you see what happened? We just did five minus four, and we got one. And I still brought down this square here because we haven't had um, a chance to do that yet. Let's do that next. What is one squared? One. Okay. Is there anything else in there that we have to do? Yes, we have to finish what's in the middle there. Five square. Yep. Once you've solved what's in the in the grouping symbol, you can just leave the grouping symbols off. <sighs> So with, with more than one set of grouping symbols, you go to the inside set of grouping symbols. And you work your way out. Following. Okay. Following PEMDIS. I would like you to take your pencil right now, even if you're not done copying, I still want you to do this. On your worksheet, please cross off questions 9 and 10. We aren't doing those problems. Okay. Um, cross off. 14, or you could write by it extra credit, but in order to get extra credit for that one, you have to give me a sentence or two that has mathematical vocabulary in it to explain yourself, okay? So we're not doing 9, 10, and 14. And number 13, number 13 just means make sure you do that expression for every spot on the chart, and we have to do that, okay? But you don't have to show me all your work for filling in that chart. You have to show me all your work for questions one through eight on that separate sheet of paper. Okay? Does anybody want me to do any other questions up on top one through eight before we break up into partners and get working? Number two. 
Number two, you're just multiplying straight across and then multiply straight across and then divide it out. Okay. I'm hearing six and I'm hearing four. Can you do number three? Number three is basically the same thing that happened inside of this expression right here. If you think of this expression all by itself, that's how you do number three. Okay. So in there, you're just going to add first and then square your number. So that one is actually not so bad. I think that maybe we should do number six, okay? Just because those double brackets, those are really something we don't have to start worrying about until seventh and eighth grade. But it's a good idea to do bigger math before you have to actually get there sometimes, I think. Hey, so I copied it. My first step, plug in your numbers is your second step. All right, Z minus Y, Z's value is five, Y's value is two. And I have to square that when I'm done and close parentheses, seven, okay? So according to the order of operations, I must do what's in parentheses first. And since there's two sets of grouping symbols, I'm going to start with this expression. Okay. Four squared. I can't do exponents yet. Five minus two. Three squared. Okay. Now I can do exponents. We've, we've gotten done with the P. Now we do exponents. Four squared. Okay, three squared, 16 minus nine. Okay. And now I multiply or divide, right? Because there's no more adding or subtracting. We did a subtracting. Brandon, you forgot to divide first. No. Oh. Um, since, since there's a bracket here, I forgot to put my brackets in. I'm sorry. And you put the, and then 60 minus 9 is 7. Oh, yeah, you're right. I don't know where I got 5 from. Thank you. Anything else? So do you see how I can easily make a mistake like that? Now what's our answer? What's our result? Okay. I had a few people going, I don't know about this answer. Why is three squared nine and why is four squared 16? Four squared means four times four. Three squared means three times three. Okay. So then when we get to four and we have to do the cube of something, something cubed, okay, uh, what would be five cubed? It would be five times five times five, right? And five times five is 25, and then we have to multiply that by five again, so that's 125. So you have to remember when you're cubing something, you multiply the same base number how many ever times the, the uh, exponent tells you to, and in that case, if it's cubed, it's three times, okay? Now, I would like it if we work in pairs, um, and I'm going to let the teachers in the other classrooms decide on that, where they, how they want to go ahead and do pairs, but I'm going to go ahead and in my group, I'm going to use flippity to pair people up. Now, I'm going to also, before I do that, say, okay, is there anybody who would prefer to work alone? Because I know some people would rather work alone in mathematics. And if there's one or two that want to work alone, that's fine. Okay? So uh, from here, I'm just going to mute and let you guys get to work on your math. And if you have any questions, you can uh, hop on and ask questions. Hopefully, I can hear you over the noise in my classroom. Wait.
Was I muted all that time? No. You just muted.